What up, techies? Is interstellar travel possible? Enrico Fermi was a renowned Italian physicist who is widely credited with being the first to split the atom. He also made significant contributions to quantum mechanics and statistical mechanics. In 1950, Fermi posed a question that has since become known as the Fermi Paradox. Where is everybody? In other words, if there are billions of planets in the Milky Way galaxy, and if life is not unique to Earth, then why have we not found any signs of intelligent alien life? Many scientists have attempted to answer this question, but so far no one has been able to provide a definitive answer. Some believe that we are simply too young as a species to have encountered any other advanced civilizations. Others believe that every civilization eventually destroys itself, either through war or by unknowingly self-destructing. Regardless of the answer, the Fermi Paradox remains one of the most enduring mysteries of our time. In this video, we're going to look at the feasibility of interstellar travel and whether or not it's actually possible. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that space is vast. The distances between stars are so great that only the most technologically advanced societies could hope to travel there. If we somehow manage to construct a spaceship capable of traveling at the speed of light, it would still take centuries to get to the nearest star. That is, if we even locate another suitable planet for human colonization. Humanity, it seems, will have to remain confined to our solar system for the foreseeable future. But who can say for sure? Maybe one day we'll figure out how to travel through time and space. If that's the case, the only limit is your imagination. If humans ever hope to travel to the stars, they'll need to find a way to overcome the problem of travel time. After all, it would take many lifetimes to reach even the nearest star system using conventional propulsion methods. Luckily, there may be a way to reduce travel time by harnessing the power of light drastically. The Breakthrough Star Shot program proposes to use a powerful array of lasers to accelerate the tiny sail-powered craft to 20% of light speed. These crafts would then be able to cover vast distances relatively quickly. However, there are some challenges that need to be overcome before this technology can be used for human space travel. For one, the craft would need to be beefed up in order to support the additional weight of human passengers and their life support systems. Additionally, the sails would need to be much larger to generate the required thrust. But if these challenges can be surmounted, then light-powered space travel could become a reality within our lifetimes. As we look to the future, it's natural to dream of traveling to the stars. And while some of the obstacles to interstellar travel may seem daunting, there's reason to believe that we can overcome them. Take, for example, the problem of distance. While it's true that the vastness of space can seem impossible to traverse, recent advances in propulsion technology have shown that it may be possible to travel great distances in a relatively short amount of time. Similarly, the problem of cosmic radiation can be mitigated by developing better shielding for our spacecraft. In short, there's no reason to believe that we won't someday be able to visit distant worlds and explore the mysteries of the universe. So don't give up on your dreams of becoming an interstellar traveler. The future is waiting for you. If an atom or molecule collides with something at high speeds, it might cause damage. In 2016, Thiem Hone and colleagues quantified damage caused by individual particles in their research. Light hydrogen and helium, they reason, cause no real damage and instead only deposit heat. The comparatively common oxygen and extra huge iron account for the bulk of the harm caused by heavier elements. The trip to Alpha Centennial would melt our forward hull. However, it is only about 0.5 millimeters deep. Similar to the damage caused by dust impact, the forward surface area of the ship is vaporized or worn down to roughly a millimeter depth every four light years. That being the case, a shield is necessary. Just not a huge one and not everywhere on the ship, it should be focused on the front, specifically a windscreen. Thus, we may reduce the starship's overall mass by keeping it as long and slim as possible. The home article didn't examine the feasibility of crewed missions, rather, it concentrated on missions like Breakthrough Starshot, in which the spaceship is a wafer-thin ship, making an ablation of one millimeter significant. It turns out that without at least some shielding, our entire payload could be annihilated by gas for the types of missions that might happen in our lifetimes. At this point, it seems as though interstellar travel has a chance of success, at least in terms of the spacecraft making it. For nearby stars, a moderate amount of shielding is adequate and the ability to restore shielding might potentially take humanity to more distant portions of the galaxy. For the latter, there are more sophisticated possibilities, such as a shielding mass that moves in front of the spacecraft to deflect incoming particles or magnetic fields that deflect incoming grains. But, we don't need anything too sophisticated to launch our interplanetary journey. However, there is also a more subtle risk, a scenario in which our starship arrives at its destination unscathed but with a deceased crew. 
Radiation is the risk in question. Atoms of hydrogen can penetrate the ship's hull in order of magnitude further than heavier elements can. These atoms lose their electrons and transform into highly charged protons, or radiation. Traveling at relativistic speeds is not for the faint of heart. Not only do you have to worry about things like time dilation and nasty collisions with interstellar dust particles, but you also have to contend that you will be bombarded with deadly radiation levels. In a 2006 paper, Oleg Semyonov calculated that the crew of an inadequately shielded ship at any relativistic speed would be subjected to levels of radiation comparable to the core of a nuclear reactor. Needless to say, this is instantly lethal for any living organism. The good news is that there are ways to protect yourself from this radiation. A titanium windshield a centimeter or two thick should be enough protection against this radiation at 20%, as would be a shield of water a meter. Thick perhaps the best option because you're carrying that water anyway. You also need an inner layer of lead or similar to block the secondary radiation. If you want to travel at speeds closer to that of light, you need to have up to several meters of titanium or tens of meters of water. So if you're planning on going for a joyride at near light speeds, make sure you're properly prepared. Otherwise, it could be a very short trip. Outside spacewalks are impossible at relativistic speeds. However, none of these measures are effective against cosmic rays. The other form of radiation, high energy particles, ranging from protons to heavy iron nuclei, abound throughout interstellar space. These objects are sped up in the enormous magnetic fields of black holes, supernova, and our galaxy. Even though the radiation dose from cosmic rays is less than that from interstellar gas, it still poses a significant cancer risk throughout our four-year journey. Cosmic rays, however, are more difficult to shield against because they might come from any direction. Most cosmic rays will come from the front if you accelerate to 80 or 90% of light speed, where your windshield will offer the most protection. However, the spacecraft will require shielding on all surfaces at more realistic velocities. While a meter-thick layer of water covering the entire ship would do this, it would also add too much mass for our current Starship propulsion technology to accelerate to relativistic speeds. Most likely, the first people to travel between the stars will have to risk their health and hope that the destination is worth it. For interstellar trips longer than a few light years, shielding against the interstellar medium, micrometeoroids, and cosmic rays will have to get more serious. But it turns out that there's nothing stopping us in theory from slowly dragging ourselves from one planetary system to the next. Interstellar travel is hard, but it's not impossible based on what we know about the space between the stars. And it doesn't explain the Fermi paradox in a clear way. If the universe is trying to kill us, it's not doing a good enough job of it, not hard enough to stop us from expanding our species reach to faraway parts of interstellar space. That requires creating the conditions for the union of not only electromagnetism and the weak nuclear force but also the strong force and possibly gravity. However, we agree that we have no idea of what that may look like. Reliable theories exist for putting together the three quantum forces. Even the fuzzball of string theory provides us with suggestions for black holes and quantum gravity. Given that the particles emitted as Hawking radiation from a black hole are entangled with its inside, Anders Hegvik wonders whether we may in principle learn about the black hole's interior by collecting information from these particles. Is it possible that this could provide light on how the reality of black holes differs from our theoretical understanding? If Hawking radiation is in fact bound up with the black hole, then monitoring it should in theory reveal information about the black hole's innards. In fact, learning more about the black hole's innards in this way is opposed to the accepted black hole hypothesis. The Nohair theorem states that only the black hole's mass, spin, and charge can be determined from outside observations. Many physicists believe that the Nohair theorem must be broken to resolve the information dilemma, but understanding exactly how this is done would be revolutionary. Ateneños raises the question of whether or not we can be certain that virtual particle-antiparticle pairs get separated near a black hole's event horizon. However, there are some rather good lines of argument that suggest it must be real, even though we have never discovered Hawking radiation. Moreover, most of these arguments do not address virtual particle pairs. Positive and negative frequency modes of the quantum vacuum were discussed in Hawking's original argument. When it comes to black holes, one of the biggest questions physicists have is what happens to the information that goes into them. According to the laws of physics, information can never be truly lost. So what happens to all the matter and energy that gets sucked into a black hole? Some scientists believe that wormholes could hold the key to solving this puzzle. Wormholes are hypothetical tunnel-like structures that connect two points in space-time. If a wormhole connects two black holes, it's possible that matter and energy could pass through from one black hole to the other. This could theoretically allow information to escape from a black hole, 
avoiding the paradox altogether. Of course, this is all just speculation at this point, but it's an exciting possibility that could help us to better understand some of the most mysterious objects in the universe. Let us know what you think in the comments.